America is still in shock following Saturday's assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump at a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. This comes as the Republican National Convention begins today in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Here to discuss from Butler, Pennsylvania's ABC senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky and from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, ABC's Jay O'Brien. Aaron, let's start with you. The suspect has been identified as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. He was killed by Secret Service counterfire. What more do we know about him? What's remarkable about him, Eva, is that he seems so unremarkable. You can see here his house still taped off, off limits, part of the criminal investigation. Inside, the authorities found rudimentary explosives, but they have not found any firm clues as to why he tried to assassinate former President Trump. He drove about an hour and change from here to Butler, Pennsylvania, and then perched on a, on a roof. He had uh, been a, a gun enthusiast, it seems, a member of a local sportsman's club, but he never was uh, known to his friends to be particularly outspoken about anything. They remember him as quiet and reserved. He has no military experience. He worked at a nursing home. And, and, and the authorities say he, he took the gun that was legally purchased by his father in 2013. What they still don't know is whether he uh, took it improperly from his father, you know, without him knowing, or, or whether it was a regular part of his, his day to borrow the gun to, to go and shoot. A lot of questions still unanswered. Uh, Jay, the RNC kicks off today. What's the mood like there, and what type of impact could the shooting have on events for the week? Well, DeMarco, here in Milwaukee, I'm already hearing that there are two so far unwritten themes emerging of this convention, in addition to all the themes that were already going to be made by Republicans on the stage. One is defiance, the personification, if you will, of that image of former President Trump with his fist in the air minutes after he was shot. Republicans tell me they were emboldened by that image. They want to bring that theme to this convention. And then there is this emerging theme of unity. We know that former President Trump has given some print interviews, and he said in those interviews, that he is feverishly rewriting the address that he plans to deliver here in Milwaukee on Thursday night to try to capture, as he says, this message of unity. But make no doubt about it, that attempted assassination of former President Trump is going to hang over everything that plays out over the next few days here in Milwaukee. And let's talk more about that attempted assassination. Aaron, you know, the security at that rally is now under review, but so many people are asking, how could something like this have happened? The Secret Service is asking itself that question. We heard from the Director of Homeland Security, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, that there is going to be a top-to-bottom independent review outside the Secret Service to take a look at, at what had happened. And, and the Secret Service doesn't have a great track record of, of giving us uh, timely information about their internal reviews to hold themselves accountable. But here the pressure is intense. There's already calls for the director of the Secret Service to appear before Congress. The nagging question is why was an elevated rooftop position less than 200 yards in direct line of sight to the former president available to someone with a, with a semi-automatic rifle? And Jay, speaking of security, there are concerns about state laws there in Milwaukee that allow people to carry. Uh, what's the security presence like now? Absolutely. There are two perimeters here in Milwaukee. One is what's called the hard perimeter. That's the area immediately around the Pfizer Forum where they're going to have the RNC. And then surrounding that hard perimeter is what's called the soft perimeter. In the hard perimeter, the Secret Service controls it. You can't bring a gun in. You can't drive a car in, et cetera, et cetera. In that soft perimeter, because Milwaukee is an open carry state, local officials who are the ones who run the soft perimeter say they can't ban firearms. They can ban other things like tennis balls and paintball guns, which they have, but because of that state law, they can't ban firearms. So in walking distance of where they're gonna have the RNC, you won't be able to carry a paintball gun or a tennis ball, but you will be able to open carry an AR-15. And that is something that local officials tell me here concern them even before that attempted assassination on former President Trump. In the wake of that attempted assassination, a city alderman here tells me that it is, quote, utterly ridiculous, DeMarco. All right, Jay, thank you. And Aaron, there's some uh, activity behind you. Uh, is everything okay out there? 
Yep. Yeah, I was analysis. just noticing that the, a couple of folks, uh, it, I'm not sure they were, were officers in uniform necessarily, but they were in matching shirts, knocking on the door and then entering the home of the shooter. And you can see by the, the entry into the home that they, there's still very much an active investigation as police scour for any clue to try and get at the motive for this historic act of political violence. Every second of minute matters. All right, investigative reporter Aaron Katursky and ABC's Jake O'Brien, thanks to you both. We appreciate it.